All right guys, how are we doing today? You're gonna notice this is way different, so I finally, I got another, another camera. Somebody's getting murdered over there. I don't know what's going on. It sounds like fire, fire trucks, but anyway. So this video is going to be talking about safety gear. Everyone asks me, yo, what pads should I get? You know, stuff like that. So I wanna run you through the pads that I wear, why I wear them, what I like about them, but also what I hate about them. So let's get right into the video. All right, so I'm taking off my pants to show you the spandex that I wear, and it's kind of awkward, like I'm by the city building, it's kind of out in public, and like I'm just taking my pants off, so I hope they don't think I'm filming like a different type of movie. I don't know, but anyway, the first thing, guys, let's talk about the spandex, and why are we talking about the spandex? And it keeps your pads from slipping around. I promise you, if you just buy some shin pads or some knee pads, you're gonna get them and they're gonna slide down on your knees. You're gonna be constantly like sliding them up and it's not fun. Even if they have that neoprene like plastic or rubbery stuff that's supposed to keep it from sliding, it's gonna happen. And so what I started doing a long, long time ago is just some full leg spandex. You can get it from Walmart, Under Armour, like Ross probably has Nike or Under Armour brand. Just get some spandex. Under Armour has the heat gear, so theoretically it keeps you cooler. And that's what I got. They, they look like, like almost any pro that you're gonna watch is gonna be wearing them, but they look kind of funny. And, but anyway, look, this is what they look like. They're just real tight pants, okay? And so they, uh, what the idea is, look, this is when you crash and it rips through your pads, your spandex, and your, your pants. But anyway, this being under your pads keeps your pads from slipping around. So this is like a super important thing here is that spandex that's going to be like my most important piece of advice because not many people have it not many people talk about it everything that i'm showing you here in the video i'll put a link in the description for it so you can check it out you can get it if if it feels right for you so basically i'll just run you through how i get ready to ride so first spandex goes on first okay spandex then you're going to want to put on the knee pads this is what i got they're Fuse Alpha knee pads. They are, I bought them in like 2018 at Woodward. I just bought them from Amazon. I think they're about 40 or 50 bucks. Um, as you can tell, they've, they've been through a lot here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the Fuse Alpha knee pads, there's more expensive options, there's better options, but these are the cheapest ones and they're definitely my favorite. They have little pads right here on the side, okay? And it's just like soft plastic. There's a piece of hard, thin plastic in here with some padding over top and then another soft piece right here on the corner. This is generally where you smack your knee on your stem so it's cool that they put that on there. Um, it straps together with Velcro at the top and doesn't have anything at the bottom except that piece of like, um, oh what do you call it? The, the rubberized stuff that's supposed to keep it from slipping. There's also a strip of that right here up top keeps it from slipping around on your legs. These are half decent, 40, $50. And like I said, you can get the more expensive version, but when you're just starting out, this is gonna be just perfect because I mean, like I said, they last forever. So like you're literally never gonna need to buy more. I'm gonna buy more cause they're falling apart and I wanna try some combos, but they last forever. They still do the job. And one thing I hate about them actually is that if you crash the impact going this way pushes it up and you're gonna get road rash from this part of the pad rubbing hard against the top of your knee. That's the only thing because they're not really connected so they can slip up when you crash pretty hard, but it's not super common. So anyway, put the knee pads on, okay? <laughs> knee pads on. Next, we're gonna be putting on the shin guards. You will notice these look exactly the same. These are the Fuse Alpha shin guards. I did not get the knee shin combo because when they go together, I'm sure that they're like this. There's no gaps, okay? Another problem with them is if you get the combos, they might not go all the way down to the bottom of your shin. So it leaves a part of your shin exposed and then you slip a pedal and then you smack the part of your shin. It's Murphy's Law, man, damn Murphy. You smack the part of your shin that's not covered. It's a pain in the ass. It's like not very fun. And so I got, the, got them in not a combo so that I made sure that the size would cover my whole shin. And it's been pretty solid. I wish they were combos and longer because I don't like that they don't piece together. But it, that's okay, that's okay. 
$44. Hard piece of plastic in here. Let me show you. I'll show you on this one. But um, hard piece of plastic in here. That's what's saving your, your shins from the pedals. This goes on in on the inside, so you can pull this out and also wash just this. So that way your girlfriend doesn't break up with you because you smell so bad. So these are awesome. And right here, it's got like a ribbed piece. This is really hard or really soft foam up top. And then the actual hard plastic pad goes down here. So this is pretty much the gap in between your knee pad and your shin guard. And it's flexible so you can slide it up as far as you need to. These are also Velcro. Um, and they don't, they slide around a lot. They slide around more than they should. So what I, the biggest piece of advice that I have for you is get a measuring tape, measure your calf and make sure that this is gonna be the right size. I think I got medium, let's see what I got, hold on. I got extra large. So I should have got large because these extra larges like wrap around my calf, but there's, they're barely holding on because they've, they've got to go over so much farther than the Velcro. So I really recommend measure it before you buy it. Don't just assume, yeah, I'm pretty big. I'm going to get an extra large. I should have got a large or even a medium, but live and learn, right? So measure your thing that measure your leg. That is my biggest piece of advice for you on the shin guards. $44. Like I said, next piece is going to be the ankle pads. So you can get Fuse Alpha shin, like shin whip combo. So that's the other, oh my God, I forgot to talk about the whip pad. This is on the inside of the shin guard and it's a soft plastic here. It's pretty thick, but essentially the idea here is this goes on the inside of your leg. So when you do a tail whip, boom, it, uh, that pad absorbs the shock from your frame hitting your leg or anything like that. That's pretty cool but you can get these with ankle pads down at the bottom. They just slip over your feet. They've got little ankle shields and that's kind of cool. I got these separately because I, one, they didn't have the ones with the ankle pads available when I got mine, but two, these are a little more protective. So I ordered these, they're like another $44 and they've got, it's pretty thin, soft metal or <laughs> soft metal, pretty thin, soft, um, foam here on the ankle pads and then a piece right here on the back. Uh, this is pretty useless, I think, but oh well, you know, I don't know why it's there. I don't, I really don't know. Uh, it slides over your foot and it stays pretty tight. It's got this, um, this extra elastic band holding it there. Um, those are okay. There's better ankle pads out there and I'll put them in the description because these are not the best. They're, they're very expensive and they're not that amazing. So I'm gonna put my favorite ones in the description. Probably not these, but the knee and shin pads I totally approve of, I totally love. Now, if you are feeling extra crazy, you're gonna wanna get something like this. This is called a girdle. Uh, it's for football players basically, but um, you wear this and it's got hip pads. So these are pads for your hip and this is a pad for your tailbone. So if you wash out on a loop out on a manual and slam your tailbone, this extra piece of padding here can help you out a lot. I only wear these when I'm going really crazy. You can get them at like, I don't know, Hibbit Sports, Dick's Sporting Goods, Sportsman's Warehouse, anywhere that sells like sporting equipment stuff, you can get them. They're probably pretty expensive, but a lot of them come with thigh pads already in there. Um, because that's what you need in football is thigh pads. These ones come with a slot to put thigh pads in. So then I don't have thigh pads because I don't need thigh pads. I don't need them. Um, but yeah, get these if you're feeling extra crazy. The, the second, like another really important piece of advice is the belt. And this is something nobody thinks about or nobody talks about, but this belt is a Nike baseball belt and you can see it here. It's just like an elastic belt. Okay, it's very worn out, but the reason I love this is you can adjust how tight it is essentially, and it's like $11, but it's elastic. So if you wear a non-elastic belt when you're riding, you're moving around so much and flexing that that belt is restricting you. So with this thing, it, it holds your pants like where you need them to, and then, but it also flexes as you're moving. So when you're doing like spinning for a 360, it's not restricting you back. And that's a game changer for me because I'd hate like a shoelace never worked. A real belt is just too tight sometimes and, or too loose. Like there's no happy medium. And so getting this baseball belt was totally a game changer. Again, get those when you pick up the girdle. But the last piece 
that we got to talk about is the helmet. Okay, the helmet, the straps in there, we don't want that. The helmet is something that everyone wears. This kind of, it doesn't feel like I look like a doofus, but then if I look at it, it looks like a, I look like a doofus. Um, what I hate about helmets is how high up on your head they sit. So I got this one, it's the Pock Mips helmet, Pock, Dugster Bob, but it has a system inside, okay? And what you do with this is you can tighten this clicky thing and it tightens up your head so that the helmet's really firm on there and it fits really good. It also slides down a little further than most and that's one of the other reasons that I love it. But with the MIPS system, being able to tighten it on your head makes it feel a lot better. But the really cool thing about it is that if you take some impact, okay, like this, let's say, impact, the inside of it actually moves, so the helmet moves around your head. And what this does is this distributes the impact, not just to one part of your head, but it spreads it out a little bit more so that the impact isn't as great. It's just like, it just spreads the impact out so you don't smack that one part of your head really hard. It's like $150. Um, I got this one on Amazon. I heard they're changing all the helmet regulations, so helmets are, are redoing their certifications and everything like that, and that's kind of the hold up on having good helmets out and available. But I'll post the link to this one and also a couple other. I'll actually post, I did a, web, a website post of all my favorite helmets and like the best ones. I compared them by weight, by style, and, and how protective they were and things like that. So I'm gonna post that if you're really, look, I think you need a helmet, I think your kid needs a helmet, I think everyone should wear one when they're riding, uh, especially if you're doing things that are a little scary to you or a little out of your comfort zone. So get that for sure and just be safe. Now, that is really it. You know, the links are gonna be there and it's gonna tell you where they're the cheapest. Uh, so usually I'm gonna try and send you to Dan's comp, but I'm really not sure if they're the cheapest. So if I find it cheaper somewhere else, I'm gonna plug that link in there. You go check it out and get the safety gear because we don't want you crashing. Before I wrap up the video, we gotta talk about gloves for five seconds because I get a lot of questions about slippery hands. And what I did, I just got used to it. So I'd wear gloves sometimes, but not very often, but look. So you get calluses, right? And over time, it just builds up. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, but I don't think it's that necessary. I think you're gonna be fine without it. Uh, if you really want them, just get some cheap like fist gloves. They're gonna be 15 to 20 bucks. I think they're very overpriced, but you can get those and then you can just wear the gloves. But like I said, I don't really recommend it. I think the safety gear here that I talked about is pretty much everything that you're gonna need. And yeah, and that's about it guys. So anyway, have a good rest of your day and peace.